Is this machine recording? Is this machine recording? Is this machine recording? I was living in the north of England, in Hull, and was starting to do a lot of mail art. And one of the people who would send things to me was General Idea in Toronto. They did a magazine, they called it File, but it was an exact copy of Life with the, the letters moved around. And one month they had in these yellow pages, and it's called the Image Bank Request List. Different people wanted different things, and then we came across William S. Burroughs. And he wanted camouflage for 1984, which seemed a long way away in 1971. And we thought, oh, there's an address. That can't be his real address. Surely Burroughs wouldn't put his address in a magazine. Well, what's the harm in writing? And then we just sat down and started typing, and it's, it went, Dear William S. Burroughs, and in brackets, and Allen Ginsberg and the rest of the beats, I'm really tired of you all pretending you know me, just so that you can get kudos and seem really credible and special. Will you please cease and desist immediately from ever saying my name and stop telling people that you know me? And it went on like that, it got more and more aggressive, and then it just went to the middle of a sentence and you turned over and there was no more. And we thought, well, there you go, and we posted it to him. And about a week later, a postcard came through my letterbox, and I turned it over, it's William S. Burroughs, in tiny writing. Dear Genesis, loved your letter. If you're ever in London, ring this number, get in a taxi and come on over. William S. Burroughs, well, wow. So then I hitchhiked down to London, stayed with some friends in Hackney, and rang the number. So I got in the taxi, went over to St. James, Duke Street, St. James, and we just hit it off. We drank one and a half bottles of whiskey. And he also had the only TV we'd seen with a remote, and the whole time he's talking, he's going click, 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 cutting it up, bam, 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 obsessively. So there was this set of soundtrack, just uh, bits of TV going and his voice droning and all these amazing images. And it was great. We you know so much that we don't yeah. find yeah. death, yeah. obey death. Yeah. Bring yeah. a hell of it. And we, we became friends and uh, during many of our conversations on the phone or in person, mainly on the phone at that point and in letters, we said, you know, you're always talking about the tape recorder experiments and all the books that mention the cut-ups talk about tape recorder experiments and films as well, but in particular the tape recorders. But no one's ever heard it. You know, if there's anything of yours that we'd like to hear, it's tape recorder experiments. So we know what we're listening to and what we're reading about. And he went, ah, nobody's interested in that. No, no, no. It took me seven years of constantly nagging him and persuading him to do a record of the tape recorder experiments. And eventually he gave in. And he just, we said, well, so where's the tapes? You know, what are we gonna do? And he pulled out boxes and boxes, shoe boxes, filled with cassette tapes and bits of reel-to-reel. -reel. And he just sort of said, here you go, catalog those. And the only way to catalog them was to, because they had no labels, most of them, was just to play each one and sit in those days with a typewriter and just type each sound bite, you know, what it was, to describe it. So Moroccan music with drums, slash, radio feedback, slash, William talking at a party, slash, it went on and on like that for hours and hours and hours. But we did it, we did every single tape. And we made notes, of course, as we went, what bits sounded like they might be good on a record. And then he says, do you want to catalogue the rest? <laughs> In Lawrence, Kansas. So then we had to do a trip to Lawrence, Kansas, this, me and Sleazy, and spent two weeks in a room with two reel-to-reel -reel recorders. Again, just cataloguing every single sound bite of every single tape. Well, we, we tried to, to pick, a, a, the best examples we could find of different techniques. We wanted to have, where they're speeding up and slowing down the tape by hand, we wanted those sorts of noises. We wanted the cut-ups from the radio. We wanted him reading. 
but a reading that was cut up, the text was cut up, and that's the, um, where's the one about cucumbers? This is operational from the Thronson home, even the cucumbers. A piece, the oldest piece we could find was actually in the Beat Hotel in Paris in the 50s. And Burroughs received a letter, and you hear it happening, he sort of gets a letter from his lawyer, and he opens it, you hear him open the envelope, and then he pulls out the piece of paper, and he's looking at it and goes, mm, mm, let's see what it really says, and he starts cutting it up with scissors. Because he's going to cut it up. I want to hear what he's really saying. Yeah, I'm afraid, I'm afraid of that. Oh, this guy's got something really yeah, good really now. Some of them just stood out. Some of them were just very memorable the tones of voice, the content. And then it was also James. James has an encyclopedic memory of every text, every manuscript, every book, every everything. And so he could direct us towards things that we said we needed examples of. Um, but then he was learning a lot too because he hadn't heard these before really. So it was a real adventure for all of us. Sleazy came up with the cover image totally on his own. All we said was it should have a tape recorder, but he made it just so stark mm -hmm. and enigmatic. And of course, it's an empty room because there's nothing here now but the recordings. And to make it be of its era, because all the recordings on here are, are from the 50s and very early 60s. Mm -hmm. So we want it to be almost like it had happened then, but nobody noticed because there were several records out of William reading, but nothing of the tape recorder experiments at all. No one had ever been interested enough to do it. And it seemed like a glaring mistake. We wanted people to, to give William and Brian Geiss in their credit, their due. Because when, when we met Burroughs, his books were all out of print. The 60s were celebrated William and then those faded away and people lost interest in the whole culture for a while. And it seemed to me that that was a tragic mistake too, that people needed to know that this was something that could be applied in a very relevant way, both then and still today, that cut-ups are one of the most important artistic tools of the last two or three hundred years. They've influenced everything all through the culture, advertising, television, movies, music, poetry, art, everything can be traced back to some influence in the cut-ups. And people need to know their history. Nothing here now but the recordings may not refuse vision in setting forth. Silence.